Hey everyone, Dan here and welcome to the vlog. Right, so uh, recently, I guess like a lot of you, the gigs have been, um, shall we say, non-existent. So I've been doing a lot more recording at home and one of the things I've been playing around with is double tracking. So double tracking has existed ever since Les Paul invented multi-track recording back in the 40s. And the concept is simple. You record a part and then you record exactly the same part and that sits on top of the first part. And what happens is you have these little differences between the recorded parts that gives you this double track sound. And it's a technique that's been used from the Beatles to Black Sabbath. It's a really fantastic way to add depth to a sound. So what I wanted to do today is take you through my five favorite double tracking techniques. So the first one is really obvious. Just play it exactly the same. So again, all we're gonna do is record one track and then we're gonna put the second track over the top of that first track. So here is an acoustic guitar part I played and it's gonna be on the left hand speaker. And here is that part recorded again and it's gonna be in the right hand speaker. And now this is what happens when you put them together. What we're after is the tiny differences between those performances. And that's what gives us that double tracking sound. So this first example is just play it again exactly the same. Okay, the second one is play it a bit differently. Okay, so for example, we might have a riff. And at certain points in the riff, one guitar might break away to play something a bit different. We're gonna harmonize with that first guitar and then come back into unison. I love doing this because you get that double track texture but then adding that better harmony here and there, it's superb. So the third one is double tracking it with a guitar set up in Nashville tuning. Okay, so here's a guitar part on the left hand side in normal tuning. And on the right hand side, it's the same guitar part in Nashville tuning. Now, when you hear them together, So what's happened is we've ended up with a voicing similar to that of a 12 string guitar. And you can hear it sounds different than a 12 string guitar because the performances are separate. So it's a really great way of adding that type of texture to a sound. So number four is something that Mick and I did when we did a show on working with two guitars in a band. And that is double tracking with a capo. So what we'll do is I'll play some chords in the left hand side. Then I'm going to play the same rhythm part, but using different voicings of those chords by using a capo. And when you hear those together, now you can put the capo anywhere you like, depending on the voicings that you want. Um, it can be really cool to put the capo on the 12th fret and play that part an octave higher. So my final favorite double tracking technique is using EQ. So a few years ago, we had John Stockman from Carnival uh, join us on the show. Now, if you don't know who Carnival are, stop the video right now. Um, go to YouTube and search for We Are from Carnival, spelt with a K and V-O-O-L. Check it out, they are the most amazing band. But one thing about their guitar sounds is they're very thick, very dense. And I asked John how they go about tracking these guitars with such dense sounds. 
And he said, one thing they do is they'll take an EQ pedal and they'll just notch out every second frequency on the graphic and record one guitar with that. And then they'll do the opposite with the second guitar. So each guitar part is recorded with these sort of opposite EQ settings. So on the left hand side is the guitar recorded with this EQ setting. And on the right hand side, we're gonna use this EQ setting. And now when you hear them together, Now this is a great technique for making dense guitars work in a mix. We're creating space for them to work together. Now some other EQ tricks you might try is simply making one guitar dark and one guitar bright. So let's take all these techniques, play it the same, play it a bit different, Nashville tuning, using a capo and using EQ, and let's hear it in the track. Now that might be a bit of an extreme example, uh, but double tracking is a really great way of using the existing guitar parts you've already written and making them thicker, creating new textures with them. Now there's a few questions people have about double tracking. One of them is, can I do this with a pedal if I want to do this live? And you can get close. If we take a short delay, okay, and we modulate it a bit, we get our first signal and then behind that, we'll get the second signal that sort of moves around a bit. And it can sound great, so I'll play a bit, and then halfway through this, I'll turn the modulator delay on. the sound of the same thing double tracked. So the modulated delay trick is great for doing this live. You know we have our original signal and then behind that we have this delayed signal that will move around a bit. Um, but it's coming from the same source. It's different than having a double tracked uh, signal where you know things have their own sort of energy and sort of move backwards and forwards on their own. Um, but yes, the, a modulated delay uh, will get you close. Another question is, does phase matter when you double track? 
And it's really interesting. So what I'll do, I'll take one guitar part and I'll copy and paste it. So it'll be exactly the same guitar part on the left and right hand side. Sounds like this. And now if I flip one out of phase, it sounds like this. Okay, so you hear that really full on cancellation, but now if I take the same guitar part and I double track it, if I flip the phase on the right hand side, so what we get is a dramatically reduced effect because we don't have that phase relationship with those two signals because they're coming from separate sources. So the phase is much less of an issue. So the last question is, what about panning? Um, in all the examples that I've shown here, I've panned all the guitars hard left and right so that you can hear them really clearly. But having your guitar track and then double tracking it and keeping it straight down the center, it sounds fantastic. It all depends on the sound that you're going for and the effect that you want in the mix. Um, so, you know, just experiment with that and have fun with it. But yeah, there's no hard and fast rules panning. So there you go, double tracking. It's so much fun. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. And also if you have any other ideas for double tracking techniques that we could try, it'd be great to try them out. Um, yes, please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Also, massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon, to our preferred retailers, and to anyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grab merchandise, t-shirts, hats, mugs, pedals, strings, it's all there, and really helps support what we do. Brilliant, have a fantastic day, and we'll see you soon, bye.